Ooh, welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the Pittsburgh Steelers, minus six against the New England Patriots, an over-under of 30 and a half, which is the lowest over-under since the 1974 season. Back when? 1974? 1974 when Y.A. Tittle won the MVP. <laughs> no, no, who 74 was? Fran? No, that was, I think it was Alan Page. Ooh. Ooh. No, I Alan Page that was 71. 71. That was 71. You're right, because it was bottom right corner. Yeah. Damn. So basically, we almost know ball. This is the Allen Page. But seventy five was game. Fran. So who was the next one? after Fran? Seventy. What team was it? I need the team. Oh, it'd be six. All right, one, five, six. Hang. We need four though. So there's two Vikings. We're on the bottom, on the yeah, corners. Seventy five, seventy one. And you said with the next one, so that'd be seventy six going up. No, no, seventy four. Because you said seventy four. You said seventy four. This game is 74. <laughs> seventy four. Uh, seventy. Yeah. Forty thirty seven loading. Was it OJ? I think 73 was OJ. If only we had a thing that we can connect to that tells us answers really quickly. Next. <laughs> this might be just the worst game of all time. Undoubtedly. End of yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's anything there. more to say about it. No, not, not looking forward to this. All right, realistically. Should we just go straight to MVP talk? Lo- <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this will be the lowest rated primetime game in the his, in the last 10 years? This is the game where TJ Watt gets like defense player of the year hype. Because he's going to have four sacks. W- higher ratings, this game or WNBA Finals? This game. This will, like, triple that. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> no feels, one watches that. That feels rude. What you just <laughs> Nobody, said. Nobody's fucking watching that. But it's like, going to be, like, legit three to one ratio. Minimum. Because <laughs> us three are watching this. Zero of us are watching that. 30.5 over under. Dude, you're not watching this game, are you? What do you of course what am I he's going to watch do? this game. He's going to be right there. I thought you were going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. I thought you were going to move into your new apartment. Dude, I'm trying. <laughs> Josh, please. I can't wait for you, him to be like, yeah, you can move in tomorrow. You're going to move in and realize, like, you have nothing in there. You're no, I couch, know. That's what I'm saying. TV. Like, I'll, I'll move my suitcase, but I'll have to, like, spend a night here until I get a mattress there. You're going to move your stuff there, and then you still have to live here. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it harder. Yeah. All right. Let's let's uh, let's preview this motherfucker. Clear in the 40s. Great weather, if I do say so myself. Key injuries. Demario Douglas is out. Ramondre Stevenstein is He's out. He's officially out. Pop. I think they were both just ruled out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenny Pickett on the other side. Najee Harris, we've just learned, has not practiced for multiple days in a row. You always cry during these. I'm not crying. You always cry, and I can't tell if it's just because, like, you're tired at the end of the day. You laugh a lot during them for some reason, <laughs> and I don't know which, what yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it gets, it gets goofy in these hours for sure. It's, like, late. The lights are bright. I'm the, tired. The goofy hours. <laughs> yeah. That's what uh, Chris Hansen, Scott Hansen. Chris Hansen? Scott Hansen. Scott. You should call the 4 o'clock games the goofy hours for sure. That would be good. The witching hour. All right. On the Pittsburgh side of the ball, yes, we have Kenny Pickett out. We've got Najee Harris missed two straight days of practice. He may be out for this one. Uh, yeah, general storylines for the game. I already said it. Just TJ Watt, deep boy. TJ Watt can make a, a strong case. When you look at – okay, because we've had a lot of conversations about the MVP award, right? Mm-hmm. Now, the differentiation between MVP and then, like, deep boy – Oh, boy, those are more stat-based, right? Like, I don't think wins matter at all in those, correct? No. Right. You're right. Now, wins matter way too much for the MVP, which is why Brock Purdy is now the odds-on favorite. Is he? Straight up? Yeah. A lot donation. Of Straight donation. <laughs> Clown-ass sports books. Some sports books knows what's up. They know that Brock Purdy probably going to, and the 49ers probably going to finish with the most wins in the NFC. Do you think they'd ever give the MVP to someone that's not top 10 at their position? He would be top ten. What makes him not top ten? Because ten guys better than him. Not based on like passing yards. Not based on that's passing a, touchdowns. That's a reach. Yeah. You don't think there's ten quarterbacks better than Brock Purdy? I don't think you could find a single stat that says that. Who gives a shit? Like I mean, literally, literally everyone who vote votes for the MVP well award. But like betting and you gotta and watch. Like he's. I think you, I actually think you have to watch because I think the people who are saying he's there's like a difference a between the system, like me like saying he's good versus top ten. Like I've. Came out and said he's better than Jimmy G. I think he's solid, but top ten's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. That's There's not yeah. that many good quarterbacks in the NFL. I actually want to hear. He's like, playing better than Justin Herbert. So you would facts. I don't. That's you not. Would it's take not him even over close. Herbert. You would take him over Herbert for the MVP this year. Yes. That's not what I'm asking. The I'm MVP saying. is not who you'd build a franchise around. Okay, it's but not you, what that but is. But still, you're not going to give it to someone that's not top ten at their position. But right, well, but in you're, the league today. But you're but you're arguing you wouldn't take him over Justin Herbert, but you. They're not saying top 10 of the position in terms of, like, who you would redraft a team with. I'm not saying for the next 10 years. Still today. 
If you had to play one game, you're yeah, not drafting Purdy. him as a top 10 QB. One game today, Purdy. Herbert's not uh, played terrible this year. That's So I'm asking, you would take in one game today, Brock Purdy over Justin Herbert. Yeah. All things equal? Sure. In in his current offense, yeah. I'm not saying on Herbert on the Chargers or Purdy on the Niners. I'm saying even playing field. I'm not taking Herbert over Purdy. Are you serious? Yes. For one game, hell yes. Purdy, on the Justin same Herbert's team. Not, Justin Herbert ain't doing it, but, dude. But that's also not, it's who has been the most valuable player this year. Okay, I guess I'm arguing two different things then. You are. Correct. Everybody who argues against Purdy is arguing two different things. I just still think because they'll never give it to someone that's not top 10 in their position. But we're what arguing, like, what, what makes him, him not top 10? 10? The fact that there's 10 guys better than him. But Not we're based on their b- box scores. Like, throw the fucking touchdowns or passing yards so out the window. What, what do you, okay, so in that case, the MVP every single year should go to Patrick Mahomes because regardless of stats, regardless of wins, he is the guy who you would take if you were redrafting a day. That's not an award. That's I, just saying Patrick Mahomes I think Mahomes he's the is. best QB in the league, yeah. but is That's where contracts come into play. What? They get their contracts. There's no awards for that. They get, they get a contract, and the MVP yeah. is given out to who's been playing the best this year. I'm just – think of any MVP ever that wasn't top 10 at their position. But you keep saying that, and we're saying Brock Purdy is not not top 10. Okay. Base, based okay. on – you can just take the most basic stats, passing yards, completion percentage, passing touchdowns, like – but There's you can also go into else. the advanced stats, too, and it right. says that he's there. And no, it's, it's crazy. The advanced stats are the ones where, like, you know, people are like, oh, it's the system, it's the yak. And, like, the, I feel like it's the advanced stats being like, no, this kid's actually balling out. I don't, but either I don't way, see there's how you convince yourself for one game you're taking him over Herbert. But also not – but that's not what the MVP debate is. Even if, it, even if I was, like, I would take Herbert over Purdy. It's who's played the best this year. Yeah. It's the most valuable player this year. I, don't, I think I'm still in two different arguments. I think you are, too, because you're saying I would, he's like, not top die 10. on a hill. Like, I will be the book and take your money to say he won't win MVP. Like, I'll give you plus 350 right now to take him. I mean, I, th- I, think, it's a, I think it's a good, fair bet. I, I just don't. Because, okay, the people who vote on the MVP take wins and, like, passing yards and passing touchdowns probably as, like, the three highest he- or the three most heavily considered stats. Mm-hmm. Brock Purdy's going to be atop of all those. That's fair. Like, yes, his box scores will be there. That's like what goes into the MVP award. I just think they're going to give it to someone that's better than him. I think there's a chance that I simply, the, I guess just in my mind is if you line them all up and you take the box scores away and you put them in line, like he's in the middle of the league and therefore you can't just bump up because he has a couple numbers this year. But that's exactly what the award is because otherwise there's uh, otherwise the award would mean nothing. If you're just going to line people up and be like, yeah, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes over everyone, that's that's Patrick Mahomes for the rest of his career, right? That's Tom Brady for the 20 years he's been playing. Could you actually that's name 10 quarterbacks over Brock Purdy? Yeah. I just – I don't I don't think that's true. I think it's 100% true. Ones that are playing right now. Can you do that? Or can I count Burrow? No, because he's not considered that's right. in the like MVP. Bur- how would, uh, why would okay, Bur- that's, Burrow that's win the MVP thing. I'm not ask. I'm not ranking my top 10 MVP candidates. I'm ranking 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. But right. that's but, better but than what Brock the MVP Purdy. is. But if, if we're talking about you can't give it to a top 10 player, but like one of them is not playing right now, he's not considered as a – you can't consider him in the MVP race. How can he be considered but over that's, Purdy? That's that? my point. I'm not saying because Herbert's better, over, better than Purdy, I think he's higher in MVP race. I think Purdy is more likely to win MVP over Herbert. 100%. I will agree with you on that. But as far as if we're not talking about an award anymore, but if we're talking about the top ten that are able to be considered, like you said, t- today we have a game, and you need a quarterback for one game. You would not take Joe Burrow because he has a fucked up calf or whatever. Okay, so yeah, if you want to take all quarterbacks out of the league because like this is the most injured year, yeah, he might squeak into the top ten. But even then, I still think it's close. He might squeak into the top ten. Yeah, like if you take out Burrow, you take out Trevor Lawrence. Why would you take out T. Law? Because he's hurt. Okay, that's he not doesn't the, count. That's not the same. How is that not? Th- that was your point. Was P- Burrow's, Burrow's out for the season. A Rod's out for the season. Kirk is out for the season. Trevor can be considered for the MVP because he's. I mean, but that's he might the thing. I'm not game. arguing the top ten MVP candidates. I'm arguing the top ten quarterbacks in the league. That's all I'm arguing. Okay. Right. I'm saying though, like, I don't like. I entering, don't think there's sufficient evidence that Trevor Lawrence has played or even is better than Brock Purdy. And this box is, scores, no, but I think we'd both agree he is the better QB just because we're casual watchers of football and we could. Our, use our eyes to look at that. I mean, Purdy's yeah. made just as many good throws and plays as T Law has this year. Yeah. And 100%. I would say that Trevor Lawrence has bottomed out far more times than Purdy has. If Bryce Young okay. and Brock Purdy switch draft positions, this wouldn't even be a debate. Like, Brock Purdy 
would be the face of the NFL. They'd be shoving him down your throat like a Travis Kelsey relationship. Like, he'd be the greatest thing since sliced bread by the way he's playing. I, don't know, I think we're just a little too high on him. I can't. I mean, he's odds-on favorite to win MVP. I'm not, like, yeah. Like, like, he, legitimately, he doesn't actually even have my vote right now. I'm just saying, like, him being there is not, I, I don't think it's crazy at all. No, I never argue that it's crazy. I'm arguing that it won't happen because he's not top 10. Like, the him that he's in the conversation, I'm okay with. And I think he deserves to be a candidate right now. But when it comes down to it, he will not win it because he's not top 10. See, okay, this is where the two different arguments come in. That argument that he's not top 10 does not apply to the MVP award voting. I think it will be in their mind. To give MVP to someone that's not top 10 in their position is can't do. I don't care what the numbers say. I'm trying to think of the shitty MVP list of who's won it. There is no shitty ones. So if if let's say... Like Carson Wentz, he was top 10 that year he won it. Carson Wentz didn't win it. Yes, he did. Did he? No, he didn't. No, no, no. He was going to. He was pretty, going yeah, right. to, but you're saying he was top 10. That Right? Yeah. How is that different than Purdy? He's not a top 10 quarterback. Right, exactly. Wentz was top 10 that year. Purdy's Purdy top is top 10, 10 this, year. this year. I don't think so. See, now we're going to the argument, like, can you actually name 10? Obviously not counting. But it's Bowles, not even that. I, I don't understand season. how you would make that argument there. Because Wentz was. What, what do you mean? You don't think t- Wentz was a top 10 quarterback? That year. I Yes, I do. And I think Brock Purdy's a top 10 quarterback this year. Because the award is for this year. Fair, but, like, he was known to be... And this is what I'm saying. If, if he in, was drafted out. two overall, Purdy would be top 10 this year. Easy. No doubt. I don't know. I feel like that's just a third argument we're throwing in there. Like, I've, I haven't no, yet to but, mention his draft position. But you were about to mention Carson Wentz drafted at second overall. I he didn't mention his be, draft spot one time. Okay, then I'm sorry for jumping in. But what was, what was Carson Wentz's narrative that he was top 10? Watching him, he looked like a top 10 quarterback. My God. I didn't throw in a single number. Okay, but like watching Brock Purdy. I don't think he's top 10. That's it. I've yet to throw in numbers. I've yet to say in draft position. I'm just watching the guys, and I don't think he's top 10. Okay, so I, watching. And I, I think Brock Purdy is good. I'm not trying to say he's a bad quarterback. Just because he's not top 10 doesn't mean I think he sucks. Can you list the players? I'm just curious now. Like, guys that are injured, take them out. Like, even if it's not the top 10 argument. I want. So, I can't throw in Burrow, Kirk, no, d- just just exclude that. I'm not. I'm not saying that you need to name ten guys. I'm just curious who you actually have above. Purdy. Well, those are like three key ones. Sure. Besides them, because because again, I think Purdy might be 14, and those three guys now he's 11, 10, sure. whatever. But I would go Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, if you want to count that, whatever. Sure. Herbert, T. Law, Hertz, Lamar, Dak, Kyler, Kirk, and then maybe Tua. That's 11. Okay. I mean, I think some of those guys definitely are not playing to the level that Brock Purdy is. I think there's a tier where, like, you could argue, depending on how you see the game, depending on how heavily you want to weigh the stats, that Purdy could be all the way up to number, like, six or seven, down to 11, where you said. You could argue him above all things healthy, like Kirk, T-Law this year for sure. Herbert, if you want to throw fucking wins into the equation, the guy doesn't win. Kyler for sure. I get that, like, the potential. Kyler could definitely be better. But, yeah, I I mean, I think you could – argue Purdy all the way up until even like Tua. If you want to use the argument against like Brock that he's being held up by everybody around him, like Tua yeah. this in the McDaniel same, and Tyreek like the same, same case thing. for reason Tyreek is the MVP over Tua. How different do you think oh, the I two would, offenses I would throw would be? Stroud in there too. Stroud's sure. awesome. Yeah, I think you could definitely make that yeah. argument for sure. Um how different do you think side conversation? How different do you think the offenses would be Miami and San Fran if they swapped quarterbacks? They're very similar, I feel like process I think they're really good, the same accurate. exact tier. Brock and Tua. So, yeah, if I want to say Tua is 11, then that is on me to say Brock is also 11 because I think they're the same player. But I don't think either is like – to me, top 10 is just like a different threshold. Like, okay, you're actually like – you can carry your team. It's not just you can rely on your team. So, let me ask you this then. If Tua and Brock are in the same tier, right, like similar, and uh, Miami didn't lose a bunch of big games, didn't lose games to really good teams, right, and they're – what are they, 8-3 and three or 8-4 and four right now? Three losses. They have nine wins. Okay, so say they were like 11-1 and one and they beat like two of the big opponents, but the stats are still the same as Brock Purdy. Because you put them in the same tier, would you consider Tua an MVP candidate? I'd probably still lean Tyreek deserves it more. And I also would agree that t- CMC deserves it more than Brock. Okay. I don't know. I But there was something where you said— Skill players aside, you said a, to- a guy who's not top 10, but if you put him in that same category, would you give him the award? Tua? If Tyreek— Say, like, Tyreek and Jalen Waddle split their stats halfway down the middle. C-Mac was whatever. We just had the same end result, just a different way to get there. Yeah. I probably wouldn't give it to Tua. No. You don't think, really? No. You love Tua, though. (laughs) I I would say Goff's on the same tier as them. Like, I just think there's a cap where you can't rely on them 
to win you the game. See, I would I would disagree with that. That's a good. I think that's a good comp, but I would disagree in the fact that like I, I would throw Stafford over them. Like if I needed one game, I'm taking Stafford over both, all three of those guys. Sure, mm. maybe, but also that, yeah. like I'm not even arguing that anymore. Okay. Yeah, the it, the art. I disagree with that. He can't win you a game because I've seen years of Jimmy G where the the game plan is literally like don't lose this this game. Forget about you winning it. Just don't lose this this game. This is completely different. This is an offense that like actually throws the ball down the field that we've never done before. We'll throw it in the red zone. Something we haven't done before. Like we in an NFC Championship game. We threw the ball eight times because it was like, we are literally going to take it out of Jimmy G's hands, not risk a damn thing. This is not even the same system that Jimmy G was in. I also think Goff could, they would give Goff the award if the Lions were where the Niners are, for sure. And it doesn't even have to, if Goff had the same stats, but let's say they were rocking like an 86 Bears defense and they just legitimately suffocate everyone, Lions are 12-0 or whatever, Goff's running away with the award, even with the same stats. Yeah. The same stats he has right now? Yes. Easy. Because wins is so heavily equated into who wins. And that was my whole argument about Purdy last week when we were doing this. It was like, if the Niners beat Philly, which they were three-point favorites on the road, the conversation is going to change. And the fact that it was such a monumental beatdown that he went from fifth to now favorite. And I, I just think, like, as I think Dak is playing really well this year, but knowing how the MVP award gets dished out, if you lose to a division rival twice, like Jalen Hurts, who's also in the conversation of MVP, you just can't give it to Dak. Yeah. It, that's just how it works. I'm not saying I agree with it. It's, almo- it's, it's almost just, like the college football playoffs. It 100% it's is. It's like head-to-head matchups 100% matter. It's like, is. Yeah. You're almost like trying to get inside the committee room of, like, what do they actually fucking care about? Right. Yeah. I don't know. We'll Tyreek, Tyreek should win the award. I think it should be Tyreek or... Yeah. My uh, hot take is it should be Josh Allen. I think he's played the best ball. I think Josh Allen, but he doesn't have Josh Allen's like the classic case of if you took this guy off his team, how much would they suffer? And he probably has like the biggest delta of how much they are good to what they, you know, be bad. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah. But again, that's not what the award is. It's never if you take this guy off the team. Do you think people would be happier if they just gave it to the person that they would have that they normally give it to the offensive player of the year award? That makes sense. What the fuck? Like no offensive player of the year award. It's like like whoever NBA, whoever normally wins the offensive player of the year is typically like the best offensive player. Right. I think like for it should have been part. Cooper Cup. Do you, do you think year. like people would be happier if that's just who won the MVP award? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. But I think there was a year where like Peyton Manning won MVP and Drew Brees won offensive player of the year. If I'm I I, I think they've done that before. Okay. Well, let, let me rephrase then. Like if the, sometimes the MVP is actually also the best statistical player, but right. like in years where the best statistical player is just not a quarterback or the team didn't go like fucking 15 and one or something. They give it to the second best guy, the offensive player of the year. If McCaffrey won it on the Panthers, if cup won it his big year, like I think people would be happy. I think some people would, but I think on the flip side, we'd also have like, you think it would, it would would like, cause right now I feel like people just get pissed about the MVP award all the time, but I feel like more people would be happy if it went more towards the offensive player of the year award. Maybe, but I I think it's hard to get mad about like Tyree kill winning it. You're like, all right, cool. Like fucking beast, you know? He is, for sure. But I also think there'd be the same argument where it's like, how can, yeah, like it's such a quarterback driven league. Like, how do you not give, how do you most valuable kind of have to be a quarterback? Yeah. Like Dolphins would, would definitely suffer if they had to take Tyreek off the field. Like their season's over if Tua left. Yeah. They were bad last year without Tua. Yeah. Yeah. If they, you got to throw Mike White in there, like you're fucked. Mike White. He's a different story. <laughs> yeah, that's different than Skylar Thompson. Mike, yeah. Mike oh, White. Oh, Skylar Thompson. I'll tell you a story about when Mike White saved this city. <laughs> this fucking city right here. He saved it. So that, um, was a, that was our Thursday night preview. j will take it away. <laughs> Honestly, we should just rip that as the video. Like, uh, we tried to I do I was the, planning on it. Yeah, like, we tried to do the Thursday night football <laughs> preview, and we just yapped about the MVP award. Do you want to just go to slips? Do you have any slips? I'm uh, I'm down to go to slips. I don't just because they only had like fucking two. Okay. Let's you know what? Let's I let's got... touch on things really, really, really quickly. I All can right. get through this. The uh, Patriots defense has played fucking incredible. <laughs> I've used this stat before. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> We're gonna no, get through this. Was, yeah, it was good. We're gonna yap through this very quickly. Uh, they have allowed ten or fewer points in each of their last three games, and they've lost all those games on the year. Teams are 52-3 and three when they allow ten or fewer points. The three are the Patriots. Great, great job over there in uh in New England. I want to talk about their defense, though, because it is it has been uh, a shutdown defense over the last five weeks. They have allowed the second fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks, the second fewest fantasy points to running backs, and the single fewest fantasy points to tight ends. The Steelers also have a uh, very good defense over the last five weeks as well. 
Fifth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. Eleventh fewest to running backs. Seventh fewest to wide receivers. Case in point, on both sides of the ball, the defense is a thousand times better than what the offenses are, especially with Kenny Pickett out of the way here. We can run right into the fantasy rankings. I think the only thing we might have to change is, I guess, uh, let's talk about the running backs for a little bit because I think they're a little bit interesting. If Najee Harris misses time, Warren's a must start. Yeah, Warren, right now, I kind of have them as both fringe RB2s just because Najee, as much as I don't like him, he has been proving us wrong. He has been putting up numbers. But if he's out, Warren is like top 20, top 18. Like, I'm you up. could be yeah. bullish and say top 15, and I wouldn't hate it. But off a, a week where there's not many buys, I, I might be getting a little stretch there. Zeke, I think he's worth the flex cl- play. I don't think he's a must start. I do think the Steelers' defense, it's a fine line because I don't think they have the best run defense, but I also think they know that's all the Patriots are going to try and do and run the football. So I kind of go back and forth. That's why I just have them in the flex range. Uh, before I get wide receivers' thoughts. Uh, I, I agree with the running backs. I would, uh, I'd probably be like obnoxiously high on Warren if Najee Harris is out with Zeke. Um, I would prefer not to start anyone in this matchup. Like I don't even the running backs. I think Warren's gonna be good. I don't know. They they Patriots have shut down offenses. They've been sure. good. Zeke, I'm kind of interested in just because I feel like I think I'm just excited. They sneaky or trying to tell myself this is the only good thing yeah. to watch. They sneaky. Um, they've just used their running backs in the passing game a ton, and now it's all going to be to Zeke. So I could see him ending with five catches in this game, five or six catches in this game. Probably not a lot of rushing yards. I think I saw his line at like 58 and a half rushing yards, which I felt like that's probably a little high, but uh, yeah. I'd- He's going to be just used so heavily. It's going to be a PPR pyramid scheme. P- PPR yeah, fucking facts. scam action. Um, yeah, I mean, wide receivers don't want to play anybody. No, I think Deontay, though, actually looked – because we forget Mitch did play like five yeah. games last year. He averages 12 more yards with Mitch than Pickett. He gets a lot of Only targets, like a four yeah. or five game sample size, but it's not the end of the world if you have to play Deontay Johnson in the week before you need to get in the playoffs. Pickens, I would try to avoid – but if you're desperate, he's always got the big play potential in his bag. Yeah. Ooh, that's Pop's probably out for this one, I think, which so would mean Devontae is going to be their one. Parker. Just started Parker in the league last week. Got me like 11 f- PPR points. I had him in like the deep 50s, assuming Pop was going to play. But with him out, you know, I'll put him up to the early 50s, but I still can't. I would, Yeah, I would still play Pickens over him. Yeah. Oh, for sure, matter. for sure. Um, I, I grabbed some split numbers with Pat. When he had uh, Trubisky versus when he didn't in split with Trubisky, there's really no difference at all. So I don't think the quarterback situation is going to matter for Fat Pat, Hunter Henry. We don't want to play. Let's move to slips. Let's move to underdog Schlipper Stains. And as always, if you are not an underdog yet, come join us. Come tail our picks. When you get on there, use promo code BDGE, and they are going to double your deposit, and you'll get a free square. I don't know who the player is. Damn, it's- Zeke's up to 60. Maybe it's Warren. 0.5. Just straight up rushing yards? 60.5. Lower? Yeah, that feels high. Very high. You guys got one? I got one. You can rip. All right. Thanks. I'm going to go with Bailey Zappi to not have a passing touchdown today. His line is at 0.5 <laughs> passing touchdowns. Jesus. Um, Look, he, is, he didn't do that last week against the Chargers. They were obviously shut out. He didn't do it against the Giants. Um, I don't know why he would do it here. To me, those two defenses are way worse. Pittsburgh, I think, can suffocate this Patriots offense. We have a total of 30. I see it going lower. I just don't. You're I, so going to take the under in this game, aren't you? A thousand percent. I sick. feel like it's just going to be like a defensive touchdown that ruins it. I don't. Maybe. <laughs> this game's so I, I kind of, I kind of, I don't know what the odds are. It this might like actually be too high, but for the first touchdown to be no touchdown, I kind of like it. This <laughs> is a game where. Like, earlier in the year, we're like, oh, we get the NFL's. Like, they were trying to say, like, Bryce Young versus Fields. That's what they wanted the other shit one to be. This one, though, it's like, what were they going This was for? disrespectful. Like, no I mean, matter you what. You could talk yourself into any game, I think, at the beginning of the season. I like, remember, oh, remember preseason, no, though, there was, when Kenny there, Pickett was firing. Kenny Pickett was on fire. There was also hope for the Patriots offense to turn things around with Bill O'Brien coming back. Remember, everyone's like, it can't get worse than last year. It's like. <laughs> Damn. Zeke's at 61. Zeke just went up yeah. in real time. Zeke just went up. Bailey Zappi just went down. <laughs> by, by the time you guys watch it, Zeke's yards are going to be like 63 and a half probably. Yeah. Uh, I like the under for Zeke's rushing yards at 61 and a half. I also like Mitch Trubisky's under for total yards at 199 and a half. I like that too. Yeah, I, I would take the the lower. I was those. looking at how other quarterbacks have fared against the Patriots recently. Justin Herbert was able to put up 212. Danny DeVito, sorry, Tommy DeVito, was able to put up 191, and then Minshew 194. So it's like quarterbacks have been going over this line, but you know Herbert and Minshew, you would think those are like 
offenses that are higher powered than this uh, Steelers team. So I don't know. I, I do agree, though, like 200 yards from Mitch Trubisky always feels like a good under. Out on that. What about, okay, it, this doesn't correlate, but you brought up the Deontay Johnson stat. I wanted stat. to take his over. But, like, which one? Receptions? receptions? Receiving yards. Receiving yards. I felt like maybe he could push receptions at worst, but I'm like, a five just seems like I'm really needing a good game. That's fair. 41, yeah, it feels like one of those big his yards just popped up to 42 and a half. I, <laughs> I love I how they move in real time. It's so funny. Underdog is I want to take, like, right four and the, over, the whatever kings it is. Are moving. But it's not up here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's also true. We don't have a Warren line. We don't have, <laughs> I don't have shit. We don't Alan have Zeke outside of rushing yards. Alan Robinson over 11 yards. So. Okay. All right. So are those are three picks. Bailey Zappi under a touchdown. Zeke under 61 rushing yards. Mitch Trubisky under 198 now. <laughs> <laughs> under 200 total yards. Yeah, those three. I like those three. Yeah. We can too. lock them in. Just unders. Nothing but unders. Higher or lower total minutes of this game watch between us three. Ten. <laughs> combined yeah serious i'll probably get through the first first quarter this is how you watch the whole game you throw a cool 300 Fast. on a on a bar leg. you gotta force yourself <laughs> yeah. like this is gonna be expensive this, watch. Is, this is when you bet things that you can't afford to lose exactly <laughs> this is actually the most important game of the year for me <laughs> all right all right Jim. game predictions let's just do game predictions all right thing. just scroll down a little sprinkle bit. the steelers money line. This, is, this is easy actually it's not too easy but we're taking the under yeah fuck it 30 and a half. Am I crazy to want to take the plus six just because the under's so low? Yeah, no, I think that's actually the right side. I think so, too. I don't think there's I'm any a way. I'm Patriots guy. <laughs> yeah. this year. I don't think there's I've lost any unspeakable amounts of pride on <laughs> betting on the Patriots <laughs> this year. I might even take the money. You line. have taken a stupid amount of Patriots this year, I feel like. I really, no, I really only took them the one time that you didn't like them. Like, yes, this previous one was. Herbert and Keenan Allen against the Patriots. I get yeah. involved in the Patriots game. Yeah. I think I know what's going on in Foxborough. <laughs> I think I know which sides to take. It just no. don't work. I think it was a couple weeks ago you were, like, laying points with them against, uh, like, the Washington. Colts or something. Or maybe it was Washington. I was like, you They were scumbag. close. They were really close to winning. It that. was Washington. I was like, you yeah. Dirty whore. <laughs> well, I mean, Washington's, like, the worst defense in the NFL. Yeah, but you, those are two teams you never lay points <laughs> with. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I might be Patriots back. minus six this I week. I might be back. Uh, I, I want think the I'll Pats <laughs> to win just so the Steelers are out of the playoffs. There's no way the Pats are not winning another game this year. I kind of hope they don't. Against I'd rather, I'd they're rather gonna. just see them. They're, what's their schedule if it's not this one? Dude, who did they beat this year? They beat the Jets. And? Bills. The Bills. I'm oh. telling you, they have like random fucking game wins in there. This is not a division. But I feel like, work no. like that, that was the one that like that was one you already shouldn't have had. You're not going to get another. No, the team they're going to beat this year is Miami. Probably. They're yeah. gonna, they're Miami gonna loses a up on Miami. Yeah. Bill's going to destroy Actually, Tua. didn't Miami have to, like, come back? Bill's going to give him his final concussion. <laughs> oh, no. Tua's out first round of the playoffs. <laughs> oh, that'd be devastating. That would be tough. <laughs> All right. I'm taking, I'm, taking New Eng- I'm taking under and New England with the points. I, I'm How going does that under. math even add up? How are they <laughs> no. getting six and an th- over under of 30? That's so generous. What are, are they projected to score t- seven <laughs> <Zero>? points? <laughs> Seven thirteen. They're going. They're going eighteen twelve. That's <laughs> insane. Oh. Seventeen. Okay. Seventeen thirteen ish. Tight beat. You know. I'm gonna take the over. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it is legit. Give me a score, 37, me a score prediction. Yeah. Um, What's your score prediction? I think I I think the Steelers could put up like a stupid twenty points, and New England gets like. <gasps> they still have to score eleven. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> you oh feel my confident God. saying that. Jesus. They can't go over. No, no, no chance. My score prediction, 13-9 Steelers win. Don't hate it. 13-9. I'll say 16-9. So they don't cover? Yeah, you want to <laughs> lay the points now? 16-9 New England. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Honestly, I don't I hate hope it. they win. 10-3? 10-3 bats? 6 <laughs> nothing bats? God, dude. 30, 30 all of a sudden feels like such a big number for them Going to have to hit. Going 14-13 Patriots. Bad. Two touchdowns. No fucking shot. No. Uh, f- <laughs> four field goals in a safety. Seven safeties. <laughs> yeah, seven safeties. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky going backwards. <laughs> What's the most amount of safeties in a game? Probably two. Yeah. I would be surprised if there's more than two. You see the Jets have, like, more safeties in the first quarter than touchdowns? There's, how many safeties they have? I know they safety does. But <laughs> One. I think they have, like, <laughs> <laughs> one. They got more touchdowns. Yeah, there you are crying again. <laughs> Stop crying. <laughs> Oh, hang. This game makes me want to kill myself. All right, Jamo, take us away. I'm taking the pass plus six and the over. All right, All right, that's our Thursday night MVP talk. Next week, who do we got? Brock Purdy. MVP. Again. Who's Thursday next week? 
Oh, it can't be worse than this. <laughs> it's like the Pats One offense. One of the games is like Jets Browns. It's going to be the, like the Pats <laughs> and the Giants. Chargers Raiders. Let's fucking go. Let's cash in. Next Big not game. Much like, what is that combined? Seven <laughs> wins between those two teams? <laughs> Big game. Ooh, two weeks are now Saints he Rams. He was so fucking excited. <laughs> <laughs> he saw Chargers. <laughs> that was like Tiger Woods just want a fucking master. All right. Amazon Prime got this kid down so bad. That's exci- That uh, is so exciting for me compared to this week. My favorite player versus my least favorite matchup. Yeah, for you and only you. Either way. I just tried. All right, that's our Thursday night MVP talk. Tune in next week for Justin Herbert MVP. Okay. <laughs> okay.